Hello everyone, welcome to Scorpion Venom Studio Games. If you're new to this uh, channel, don't forget to subscribe. I am currently developing a video game using Unreal Engine and Epic Games Marketplace. And in this video, I will be showing you how to add a buoyancy to my physical water that I've purchased through Marketplace. Let's open up our physical water surface. And in the previous video, we left off on the physical water surface material instances. If you haven't seen my first video when I was adding this to the project, I will leave a description at the end of the video and in the description below. Let's go ahead and continue off with the materials. Now it says physical water surface comes with three different materials instances that drive from the water material. We have water instance, which is right here. We also have water instance shiny, and we have water instance alternative. Now this can be found in the physical water surfaces materials, and we have the four different materials that are saved in this folder. It says to change the water material, select the different material instance in the details panel of the water plane blueprint in your level. To tweak the look of the water surface, change the parameters of the material instance. So here's our water plane itself. And under the default material instances, we can change that. So let's go ahead back to our project and change that. If we open up our water plane and water plane itself, and right here, for some reason, it's not rendering water instance at the moment. But we're going to go ahead and open this up and we're going to try different materials. So the first one is water instance. We've applied that and we're going to go ahead and zoom out just a little bit. Going to slow down the camera since it's flying too fast. I'm going to bring it up as much as I can. And then we're going to go ahead and press play and see what's good, what it's going to look like in the game. All right, here we go. Now, this is what it would look like if I were to use this type of material in the game. We have some dark areas and lighter areas, and it's very bright, actually. I mean, I, I like the reflection of the sun, and if we get closer to it, uh, there's a lot of stuff that still needs to be fixed. And now it looks like there is another water above this material texture. Now, this is going to be tweaked, and we're going to make it more transparent so you can see into the water. As of right now, camera is set up in a way so I, I can't go through the water, but I can get as close as I can, and what water touches the camera, you somewhat can see under water. And we're going to go back out and then try other water materials. The next one is alternative. And then let's see if the, it uh, renders it out as we uh, build this out. Let's see. So now this one, it says water instance alternative. I'm just trying to see what the difference between them three or four materials that are I have in the folder. Now, of course, if we're not to use all of them, we will get rid of them. Now, this one right here looks a little bit different. Or maybe it's just the angle that I'm looking at. And I'll have to uh, maybe do some sort of comparison, like maybe do a, a screen, a split screen look of it. So that way we can see how different they all look. And of course, we'll be able to open up each material and see how different they all are. Here's a quick demonstration of the shiny water material and alternative water material. Now there's a couple settings that are different. While my light is being built right here on the bottom right, I've pulled up three different water material instances. So the first one is water instance shiny, a water instance alternative, and water instance. So the one that you currently see is water instance. Unfortunately, it's not being displayed on the viewport, but on the details over here on the right, it shows you the parameters that are being turned on and turned off based on each material. So the water instance material has the detail normal speed at 0.8, foam instance, which is at 0.3, and we have vector parameters of three different, two different colors. We have color, the bright color here, and then darker color displayed. 
and the parent is the actual water. The next one, if I pulled up, the second one is water instance alternative, and we have detail normal speed, detail normal strength, foam in intensity, roughness, and we have also minimum roughness, with maximum minimum. Now vector parameters are disabled. Of course, you can turn them on as well. And water instance shiny only comes with the detail normal speed and roughness minimum. So there's a lot of parameters that are turned off. And we also are going to use one of these materials. I don't believe I think we're going to go with the water instance alternative. So we have the foam intensity. And I think this will determine which part of the ocean will be located in certain spots. But you see this one has a roughness. And I'll have to look into this more to see how it all affects our water as we read through our document. But if you look at this picture right here, where the water instance is displayed and all the other materials, you can get an idea of what it would look like. Now we're going to go ahead and continue on with the document. It says lighting the water surface. Now I will read through this, but I will not be adding any of this since I already have a light added to the world. It says the look of the water surface is heavily influenced by the surroundings. Be it a sky sphere for an infinite ocean or the adjacent landscape of a lake. This is particularly true if you have a very reflective water material. In most of my demo videos there is just a sky sphere and no other surrounding geometry. So I enable the foam texture and the detail normal map to make the water surface look more interesting. I'm going to go ahead and uh, save this to make sure that we'll look into it too and make sure that it's enabled so we can look at it. It says a different approach is to make the water surface more reflective and to add reflection capture actors and have the look of the water be dominated by reflections. A good example for this water look is the vehicle game example from Epic. See also the tutorial below. To get started with the lighting, check out the demo maps that are included. Here's a basic lighting setup that is used. Use a sky sphere and a light source from the de default map. And you can see right here on the right it's being selected. Change the sun brightness and the rotation of the directional light source to your liking. Add a skylight with a source type SLS capture scene. This will light the water surface and the floating objects from all directions. Add a light mass importance volume and scale it up, for example, by factor 50. In the viewport, use the show, visualize, volume lighting samples option to make sure you have more than one sample in the volume. Lighting samples usually are created in great numbers only above static surfaces, but the water surface is said to be movable because of the infinite ocean system. When we make the light mass importance volume large enough, the engine will create some lighting samples scattered in the volume. Those are enough to light objects that are floating on the surface even outside of the bounds of the volume. Now we're going to go ahead and move to make an object float with the buoyancy component. And this is actually the whole video that it's going to be focused on the most. And it says the buoyancy is implemented as a blueprint component that can be added to any static or skeleton mesh. To use it, follow those steps. Set the mobility of the mesh to movable. Don't skip this step. Now before we add the object, I've realized that my scale is set to 1000 to 1000. This was something that I was uh, testing before. And if you zoom out, you can see that the, uh, the water goes all the way out. But the problem with that is now the settings that I have set up under water settings, where my wind speed is at 35 and fetch length is at 100, it actually affects my material. So if I were to reduce the scale back to what it was, which was at 1 and 1 on the X and Y axis, you can see that now the water behave much more realistic than what it previously was. Now I know that it's a small scale and it doesn't cover the entire island, but when you press play, it is set up in a blueprint for the camera to behave in a way that it will display the ocean and will render out as far as the eye can see. Now here is our result of this pattern. 
Now, like I've mentioned before, we're going to change the color so that way they match a little bit better. Now, we're going to continue with adding material. So let's go ahead and find this cube that I've previously dropped into the game, which is right here. And in order for you to do that, you go to the place, basic, and then you can just drag in a cube, just like that. So now we have two cubes. And instead of doing this, I'm going to delete them both, because I don't need them. And the reason for that is because I have some of the materials already, not the materials, static meshes in here. So we have the boat, sample, to test the buoyancy. We're going to go ahead and drop this into the world. And we're going to raise this up just a little bit so it's above the water surface. Now, now it's not actual boat, but we're going to drop both of them in. Uh, one of them looks like almost like an eggshell. And the other one is full. Let's just bring this up just a little bit, just like that. I'm going to go ahead and slow this back down again, the camera. So we have two boats. Now, the first one is static. And it doesn't have anything else because under the components, it's just a static mesh. And like I've read previously, it says right here that we need to set the mobility of the mesh to movable. Let's go ahead and actually do that real quick. So we'll take this first uh, sample board, simple uh, boat sample. And from static, we're going to change it to movable. And we're going to do the same thing for the second one. And now for both of them under the component, we're going to add buoyancy. Here's our buoyancy component. And we're going to do it for this boat as well. Okay. Now to test this, we're going to go ahead and press play. And as it loads up the level, here we go. Now currently, we have floating materials or meshes. Now one of them is sinking underwater, which is okay. We'll fix this as we <laughs> go through the settings. But if you look at this one right here, it somewhat flows a little bit better. Let's see if we can set this up a little bit higher than the material. Maybe that's the reason why it's sinking in. Let's raise it up just a little bit. And we're going to do another test. Now you. Here we go, just gonna zoom right back out like this. And the result is somewhat the same. Uh, this boat is still sinking, the center of this boat right here. And we have water inside of it. And then this is something that we're gonna have to fix. Step two complete. Step number three, it says, click the buoyancy component in the detail panel and choose a buoyancy mode, single point, auto points, and manual points are available. If you're using auto points, you can use the additional setting below to tweak the buoyancy motion. And if we scroll down to see where it's listed, if you were to have that boat right here, a cube, under buoyancy, under your default right here, buoyancy mode, auto point, and point shape rectangle, obviously it's going to say a different shape. But right here, I got to make sure that it says out of, out of points. The reason we want to go with out of points, if we continue reading, it says hit play to view the buoyancy in action. If you click simulate, the floating objects and the water surface will appear to be out of sync because the time nodes in the material and in blueprint give different values in this case. In a single point mode, the floating objects will be fixed to a single point on the water surface. The translation and rotation of the objects are directly taken from the output of the Gresner equations. I actually covered this in my, one of my other videos, what Gresner is. And it says, so all the other settings on the buoyancy component have no effect. As a result, the objects will just move with the water surface and rotate according to the local normal. 
vector of the point on the water surface where it is located. This buoyancy mode is relatively cheap to calculate because the Gressner equation need only to be evaluated at one point of each tick. However, the motion of the object will only be realistic for small objects, for example, leaves or rubber ducks floating on the surface. For large objects like boats, you should use out of points mode. And this is exactly what I'm trying to test out. And I'm actually going to be adding some boats to use as a test as well, instead of using the sample extra shape materials. It says in out of point mode, and not the materials, but the meshes. In out of point mode, a physics simulation is performed. The buoyant force on a number of points on the object is calculated and applied. The magnitude of the buoyant force depends on the depth of immersion of each point. The contracting force is gravity. Uh, they should take this word gravity out. That is automatically applied by the engine. The buoyancy component will automatically generate the coordinates for the point in rectangular or elliptical shape. Now, if you're not familiar with what elliptical shape looks like, now I've put up, pulled up one of the articles of the ellipse and circle shapes. Now disregard about well, the space travel. It says how is an ellipse different from a circle? It says an ellipse is also a close curved shape that is flat. Instead of having all points at the same distance from the center point, the ellipse is shaped so that when you add together the distance from two points inside the ellipse, called the foci, they always add up to the same number. I hope I said this word correctly. But here's an example of the green dots and of the blue ones. It says an ellipse, the two green lines added together are the same total lengths as the two blue ones added together. Going back to elliptical shape, it says taking into account the dimensions of the object. With the endpoint X and endpoint Y, you can control the number of points that are generated. In elliptical mode, endpoint X is a number of points in radial direction, and endpoint Y is a number of points in tangential direction. And I will show you a quick demonstration right here. It says radial direction right here, where the heading direction of the, po the point of the actual position, and then tangential direction is right here. Could be also demonstrated. It says in geometry, a tangential ten tangent is a line that touches a curve in one spot but doesn't interact in anywhere else. Tendential means something that goes off in one direction that way and doesn't return. People can feel tendential as though they are intentional and not <laughs> relevant to a larger group. Obviously, this has nothing to do with people, uh, but more of a direction of all these points and where the boat is going to be floating and pointing uh, on the surface of the ocean. It says you can change how deep an object is submerged with the float factor parameter. If we'll scroll down float factor right here, it says a 10. We'll have to either increase it or decrease it uh, to demonstrate the float parameters and uh, make sure that the boat actually floats above. So maybe this is what we need to tweak. And it says, in the image on the right, you can see the buoyancy setting used for the large floating cubes in the demo map that is included in the physical water surface package. Rectangular buoyancy mode is obviously a good choice for cubes. Setting the number of points in X and Y direction to 2 will generate 4 points at the corners of the box. To check the location of the calculated points, you can enable the draw debug option, which is right here. There is a little checkbox that you can click. In this mode, a small sphere is drawn at the coordinates of each point. A small sphere is drawn at the coordinates of each point, and the length of the vertical arrows is proportional to the buoyant force. Use this mode to make sure that the number and shapes of the generated points is as intended. If you set up buoyancy for large objects that need to move in a certain way, you will probably need to tweak the parameters a bit to get the desired result. As an example, have a look at the parameter used for the boat in the demo map with a point scale parameter by default set to 0.8 right here, point scale. You can also you can uh, scale the coordinates of the generated points inward so that no points are located directly at the bounds of the object. This is usually desirable. For the cubes, we have generated only four points with point scale set to one. 
right here, I believe, where is it at? Um, I don't even see it actually here. Uh, it says point scale, uh, right here, point scale is set to one instead of a point eight. Uh, those four points would be located exactly at the corners of the cube. This way, the buoyant force that exists at the center of the cube will be neglected completely. By scaling the points inward a bit, we move them closer to the center. The whole of the boat is usually bent. And with point scale set to 1, the outmost generated points would end up outside of the hole where no buoyant force exists. It may also be necessary to adjust the linear damping and angular damping right here. It's listed uh, under um, linear damping at 6 and angular damping at 10. Parameters, especially if you're dealing with very large or very small objects. And it says the buoyancy calculations are done in Blueprint on the CPU, so it's important to keep an eye on CPU performance. I'm going to actually turn that on in a second. You can use the endpoint per frame and end frame pause parameters on the buoyancy component to improve performance. With the endpoint per frame parameter, you can limit the number of points that are updated each tick, and which is right here. If I could uh, actually zoom in just a little bit on this picture, we have endpoint per frame. I think that these are the actual frames, manual points, points in 3D space defined with manual point mode. It says parameters, you can limit the number of points that are updated each tick with the Gressner equations. For the remaining points, the depth is updated with linear extrapolation from the last known values, which is which is much cheaper to calculate. You update all points each tick with Gressner equations, set endpoints per frame to endpoint X times endpoint Y. With end frame pause set to 1, Gressner calculations will only be performed every other tick. If you set it to 2, only every third tick and so on. To disable to the pausing, set end frame pause to 0. And then we have manual points and it says manual points right here. Mode allows the, to manually define the points used for buoyancy calculations. The automatically created points in auto points mode are always generated in the place. This prevents the floating objects from flipping upside down in most cases. However, sometimes you want an object to rotate freely. For example, a floating box that is smashed around by the waves. Very interesting. Maybe we'll add that too since we'll have uh, certain objects floating in the game that you can collect and pick up so if you're familiar with my game concept when we're gonna have a plane crash there's gonna be luggage floating in the water other objects uh, there's gonna be boats uh, wood drifting and other materials that you'll be able to collect and pick up and we'll have to make sure we address each material differently it says in manual points buoyancy mode you can define the coordinates of the point that are used for the buoyancy calculation your calculation yourself you can set the values in the details panel or from another blueprint enter the coordinates in local object space for an for an example have a look at the demo map manual point that is included with physical surface i'm going to delete these boat samples and add actual boats now if I go to my marketplace library, or should I say Epic Games library, I have a package called Boat Pack Volume 1 done by Visionly X. And this boat pack includes five different highly or high quality customizable boats with unique textures and LODs. I'm going to add this to the project, the island, and it's 850 megabytes. If we go to our download, it is currently being added to the project. While it's doing that, I want to just show you a quick demonstration, our uh, picture preview of all the boats. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight colored or different textures of boats. And you have one, two, three, four, five different styles of the boats that I have. Here is one of the concepts that we can use. For the game, so I think all these are going to be considered as well. Probably this one's going to be considered as ellipsed, if not all of them. Maybe some of them will be considered as a rectangle, something like that. 
since it's more of a flatter surface of the boat same as this one compared to this and that boat so we have five different styles i think this and this will be considered as a square but we'll test it out and then this this one and this one will be more ellipsed um, i don't know for a fact how it's going to react but we will check it out it'll look like we have a motor separate piece and also you get some sort of pads that you can use in the game so maybe we'll have to add some animations now not all of the boats will be included in the game maybe there will be i don't know yet uh, but we will test this as soon as it gets into the added to the project and looks like it's already in there and if we go to our content in our level it, it is in alphabetical order it says boat pack we're going to open this up under meshes we're going to go ahead and open up the motorboat or let's do let's see what other ones we have wooden boat yeah let's do wooden boat i think it will be better uh wooden boat wooden boat separate i'm not sure uh, i guess separate from the pads or the paddles we're gonna go ahead and drop this into the game it contains over 3,923 vectors uh, over 4,900 materials here we go and I think it is here we go just added the compile the shaders and this one is gonna get buoyancy okay just like that and then we're gonna press play to see how it behaves in the game now it's currently not moving at all it says we've got some sort of warnings here errors let's go ahead and change it to mobility to movable <clears throat> after we add the buoyancy we're going to go ahead under our default we're going to change it to auto point the point shape is going to be ellipse the point scale we're going to change it to 0.7 the x points we're going to change it to 3 and for the y we're going to change it to 8 the float height is going to be at negative 10. The end point, uh, we're going to keep the deba uh, draw debug all for the moment. And the end point per frame, we're going to change that to 19. And end frame pause, we're going to change that to 0. The float factor is going to remain at 10. Linear damping is going to get decreased to 3. Same for the angular damping we're going to change that to 15 the drag multiplier is going to change to 10 and then for the point offset right here for the y we're going to change it to 15 and keep the x at zero and uh, i think that's it and if we scroll down actually right here under the point offset right here you want to yeah, here we go now it changed it Let's go ahead and give it a test. And here's our boat floating. Now it is currently feels like it's stationary in a, in a way, and it only moves when the wave comes through. Next, what we're going to do is go to Blueprint folder, Visualization, and add Water Height, Water Location, and Water Speed. I'm going to go ahead and drop Water Height water location and water speed and now we're going to go ahead and press play here's our boat going completely crazy it upside down they went this way <laughs> no why are you not floating the way it's supposed to it went underwater completely I'm also going to delete the BP translucent water since I don't need it. I believe that would be the reason why 
it is not properly working since uh, the water translucency um, that was in my viewport was scaled through the entire island and I think the boat is thinking that there is another ocean is above this so now if I am to play this it should technically float with no problems fingers crossed here we go we have a floating boat guys i'm so excited goodness i <laughs> i spent about i think like three hours behind the scenes trying to set this up i am laughing and smiling out of joy that actually this boat is finally floating now we'll have to make sure that it's uh, sunk a little bit more into the water because currently it's still uh, floating above um, but I've noticed that video is almost 30 plus minute long so I'm gonna um, end video on this and then uh, we'll we'll be making well we uh, I will be making more videos uh, regarding this uh, buoyancy physics we'll have to make sure that there is no water coming through the boat at any times if we, uh, we look inside there's still a little bit of water showing inside and we're gonna have to play with that a little bit later and uh, yeah, we'll have to adjust the ocean, make it a little bit uh, less, I guess, um, more calm. And uh, we'll adjust a little bit of textures as well, so that way it's uh, a more translucent, so you can see into the water or see the ground. And then, of course, once we get to the shore of the island, we'll set it up so that way it is more calm. And we'll have to lower the height of the ocean, I believe, because it, right now going over the grass areas and things like that, we'll have to adjust that. But yeah, as you can see now, we have a floating boat. I'm very excited. And if you look at my frames on the side, it's about uh, 40 to 50 frames at the moment. And then, of course, with the GPU, 20 millisecond. Again, hopefully we can come up with something that um, the performance will be a little bit better than this. Uh, but it's in the future. And it uh, looks like these points are being uh, shown. We'll have to make sure that we disable them as well so they're not just randomly floating in here. We'll put them somewhere else where a player can't find them and see them. We'll make sure that they're not visible in the game. But yeah, uh, this will conclude the video on floating boats and buoyancy in the game. And as always, thank you all for subscriptions. Thank you all guys for joining me on this channel and watching my videos. I'm glad that you enjoyed them. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and uh, like the video. Hopefully, if you do watch this video and you do have this package, I hopefully saved you some time uh, trying to figure these things out. Just make sure you copy my, uh, per, uh, what do you call them, um, the, the components specifically for the buoyancy of the boats. So that way you can just replicate what I've created. And um, don't forget to uh, subscribe to see more videos. And of course, don't forget to uh, click that uh, notification bell button. So that way you'll be notified as soon as the video gets uploaded. And uh, don't forget to leave the comment below. Let me know what you think of this uh, tutorial. Until next video, guys.